Hi everyone, I'm Xinyin. This sales video is about how to do terahertz spectroscopy data analyze in MATLAB. You can do it in any language you want, MATLAB, Python, C, or even Origin. First of all, I want you to know there are some really useful resources online. If you go to MathWork website and go to this support, then tutorial, you can see there are a lot of tutorial about all those basic commands, such as reading and saving data, some basic plot and fitting. Just make sure you check this out before you write your own code. They're really useful. Another thing you can check out before writing your own code is this help center. If you know what command you're going to use, you can just type it here. Like if you want to do a plot, let's say plot, it will give you a page showing all the things you need to know about using this command in your code. It's almost like a Wikipedia of all the command. There are even some examples here to show you how to do a proper plot. Yep. Uh, also, you can just Google your question. This is the first video of this series. I'm going to talk about how to do Fourier transform in MATLAB. So first of all, I want to show you how we do data collection, how we collect terahertz balls. Generally, your terahertz pulse goes into a detector. And this pulse could be like this. There's another pulse called gate pulse. In this gate pulse, there will be a mechanical delay stage. It also goes into the detector. I say this part in the in the real system, this part can move. So your light path could change. Uh, and this gate pulse is usually a laser, so it could be really sharp. Then we use this gate pulse to sample through the terahertz pulse. So this delay stage, delay position, could relate back to time delay by light speed. So usually, if we get a terahertz pulse data, the first column should be this delay stage position. You need to convert that into time. And there's a, another column for terahertz intensity, this electric field intensity. To study each frequency component, we need to transfer this time domain data into frequency domain. So in MATLAB, there's a simple command called FFT, fast Fourier transform. You can just use this to convert, to do Fourier transform. Now let's go to MATLAB. So you can see I already have some code here. So this first line is to import my data file into MATLAB. This is my location my file location, this is my file name. And I use, uh, I tend to use this import data command. You can do it any other way, as long as you get the data file. Because I already know in the TLC file, the first column is my delay stage position. I'm getting all those f uh, number from first column by this line of code. To calculate time delay from this position, I need to use this simple equation between uh, velocity, time, and distance. And please note there is two here because what distance you move for your stage, your actual light path change is doubled. And the second column, because I already know it, the second column is terahertz intensity. So this is just to get a second column in. Now let's take a look of how a terahertz pulse looks like in time domain. Yeah, 
it's not necessary to be in this shape because for different emitter, different terahertz, you might have got different terahertz, uh, terahertz shape. As long as the most of the frequency is in terahertz range, you can call it terahertz source. Next, we need to do this Fourier transform. In my lab, it's just a simple line of code, FFT. If you go check the FFT page, it will tell you a lot of things. Let's go there. You can, you can root through this page, but I'm just going to use it here. Let's call this. Uh, and now this is the tricky part. How to get your frequency axis right. So uh, I'm going to calculate the average time interval, then flip it. That is just the maximum frequency you can detect. You can just separate this maximum frequency into a axis. I'm going to use this link space code. So in this line of code, you will get a set of data point from zero to this maximum frequency. And you will have this many of data points. Yeah, let's take a look of how our result looks like. Because your transformed results are complex numbers, so it would be tricky to plot that into a 2D plot. Usually what we do is plot its absolute value. Yeah. But now you can see that like, they're like mirrored. We only need half of them. so. Now what I'm doing is just cut this plot from the middle. Now if we plot this, there should be only one side left. Okay, let's take a closer look of this plot. So the x-axis is the frequency, is in the unit of 10 to 12 per second, so that's just terahertz frequency. You can see this plot have a peak around one, uh, yeah, around 0.78, so you can still call it a decent terahertz plot. And because the result is complex numbers, so it contains both amplitude and phase, in actual calculation, we will use this com those complex numbers directly. So make sure we are not missing any phase or amplitude. And this is the end of the first video. Yep, I'll see you in next one.